over here, you can see that I have a bunch of circles in my scene with physics applied. So let me just refresh this out and you can see that the uh, circles are falling down and physics uh, behavior is applied on them. I can also click and drag them, throw them around and so forth. So now what I want to do is I want to work around with how the collision actually works out. So I'm going to go on to the shapes layer and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go around into uh, let's say physics right here and then over here you can see that there's collision option which you can expand. So right now the collision is set to start. So what happens is that as I drag around, you can see that it immediately take, takes an effect. But if I were to go to on trigger, you can see that it stays in place. And when I change it to immediate, now it actually takes place. So you want them to, uh, want to hold them up in different places. Let's say, for example, like this, I'm just going to place them out. And now, uh, as soon as I'm ready, I can just change it. And then you can see that physics takes place when the uh, circles are in those positions. So right now the state is set to contour, which is more precise, but is a bit more heavy on the resource. But if you want it to be more responsive, you can turn it into fast, but you might not get very accurate results. So in my case, you, you cannot see that there's uh, much things going on. You can see right here that there's like, like inaccuracy going on right here. Like this ball is pushing this forward right here without there being anything. So if you were on contour, it is much more precise as you can see right here. So I would go for counter because uh, unless you have a lot of shapes, you don't want to go around and get onto uh, the fast option because that, that creates a lot of error. So these spears have certain amount of weight right now. So if you want to increase out that weight, you can just increase that out and the weight that this becomes more heavy. It acts as if these things are more heavy. So you can go around, increase out and you can see that it pushes it even forward right here just like this so you can go around and you can see that it tries to push itself in because of the weight right here let me just go back into 100 for this one and the next one is friction so if i were to go over here you can see that there's hardly any friction right here but it just slides down so you can bring this down totally right there and what happens is that it is very very smooth as you can see it's very very smooth it does not affect the uh, circle over here but if I were to increase out the friction very much, what happens is that now uh, it actually sticks on quite well. So you can see that they both have certain level of friction onto them right here. So you can see that that is how it is working out. So you can bring down the friction, friction make it really, really smooth right here uh, and slide them across. Or you can also bring up the friction just like that. Another one is bounciness. So these have certain level of bounciness to them, but if you want to increase it even more, uh, so now let's take it to 47%, the bounciness increases out. You can increase it even more like 100% and you can see that it's very, very bouncy now. So almost uh, it never even stops out because it, uh, it's at 100%. You can see that it keeps on bouncing out just like that. If I were to go around and keep it right here, you can see that I can make these infinitely move around. So they're just bouncing around. 100% means that it uh, um, it exerts equal amount of force. So there's no like stopping ever. So let me just change that into something like 50% right here. And then it eventually comes to halt. Or 90% would be do, um, do as well. So for more of the time, it'll just keep on bouncing. And then now, slowly it'll get into rest but it is really really bouncy as you can see right here you can see that it says bounce off scene side so right now what is happening is that uh it is bouncing off from the scene sides that is it is bouncing off from the scene uh right here but if i were to turn this off you can see that it actually falls around right here let me just refresh this out and let's see how this works so you can see that it bounces off but as soon as it actually uh, falls down, it does not bounce off onto the edges, just like that. So let me just turn that on and refresh this out as well. And return strength is when everything re uh, is the return strength for the uh, uh, sphere, the spheres, the circles in the original spot. So if I were to increase this out, you can see that it returns into original spot right here. I can increase out the strength as well or decrease. So if I were to do something like, let's say uh, there's one person, let me just increase this out. It goes back 
on to it tries to go go back onto the same place as you can see so let me just increase this out right here you can see that it goes on to the same place it tries to go on to the same place as i drag out so you want to do something like a magnet effect then this is something uh, that that comes very handy you can see that you can move this around and then place that around right here so you can decrease the return strength or really increase the return strength go back on be free and come back just like that as you can see and that is how you can work around with the collision options inside of Adobe Character Animator. So if you guys learned something as always, and as always, please like, comment, share, and subscribe.